Good morning, everybody. How's everybody this morning? Okay, we've got just over three minutes before we start. So let's have some sneaky look at some of the children's art over my shoulder. Look at that. I could line myself up. I could line myself up and have angel wings. Let me see if I can do that. Well, not quite. Not quite. My arms aren't long enough for something. But there we go. There's some children's art over on that back door over there. I can give myself a bit of a crown. We well, can see my face is reflecting the sun. Again, I forgot to bring a hat. I didn't think it was going to be sunny this morning. You just have to plan for everything, don't you? Smile. <laughs> That's as good as I got. <laughs> you want me back over there? Okay, let me go. Let me go back over there. There you go, take the sunglasses off. I need longer arms. I need longer arms to get that one. All right. So um, for those who haven't met me before, feel free to pop in the chat where you're from so I'll get to know you a little better. And while we're waiting... Let's have a look at where we are. Literally on a main road. Literally on a main road in the middle of Sydney. It's uh, these are the be, be these would be the late people going to work at nine o'clock on a Monday morning. But we're going to uh, move away from all of that bedlam and noise and into the quiet of this garden. It's really lovely. And out of the sun. Again, while we're waiting to start, I haven't actually seen this one before. I'm still discovering some of the pieces in this exhibition. That this one here is looks like um, well, it's textile art certainly. Let's make this our starting point, hey? I'm not really sure what all these pieces are meant to represent, but they're very organic. Where am I today in Sydney? It's an area called North Ride or Macquarie Park, and we're kind of to the northwest of the city, around about 10 miles. I know this is cheating. This is getting in early, but that's the name of uh, the piece that we're standing next to. All right, people, we're um, ready to start. So... So this is the front entrance of the Eden Garden Centre. And before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we're meeting today on the lands of the Gadigal people of the Aora Nation and pay respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. And this is the iconic front entrance of the Eden's Garden Centre, which has been here in North Ride for around 20 odd years. So before we actually go inside, it's really worth looking at the front entrance with the uh, almost Dr. Zeus-like uh, topiaries in the car park. If I go over near my car, we can get a better angle of this. There we go. So this, this is literally a garden centre, but it's not your average garden centre. It's uh, not only got showcase gardens, so you can uh, get some inspiration for how you might uh, implement some of the plantings and landscaping into your own garden. But as we'll see today, it incorporates an art trail as well. The art trail happens every year for the last five years. And again, just before we go inside, one of the other exhibits that's outside the front entrance is this one here called Fragile. I 
which is made out of bamboo and fishing line. And it's quite appropriate that it's situated here in amongst the bamboo, black bamboo over there. So what I'll do is where possible, I'll take, give you the opportunity to take a postcard of the information piece for each item. So if you want to find out more, you can at your leisure go and check out more about it. Okay, so let's go into the garden center. We'll be going through the uh, store and the cafeteria to get to the art trail. So if we get time, we might have a little look at the attached store. So this is the store that's attached to the garden centre. Lovely decor items. And here is the actual garden centre itself. Again, if we get time at the end after we've explored the art trail, we'll come back and have a look at the, uh, the actual garden centre. But the focus today is on the art itself, the sculptural pieces. Look at these lovely things. That's ginger. Do you know I've never seen a ginger flower before? I had no idea it looked like that. Oh, I'm tempted. I might buy one when we finish up. I don't know how it'll go on my inner city apartment balcony. So we're walking through the cafe to our first piece in the exhibition, which is actually just inside the cafe. Look at this gorgeous cafe. This is where I'll come back for a coffee later on. So the first piece on the art trail is a textile art piece. And we'll need to go outside to actually get the information on it. But for anyone who is uh, a fan of textile art, this is absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to get in close so you can actually see some more detail. So we've got crocheted hexagons. I think we've got um, French knitting in there as well. Does anyone remember doing that as a child? And the colours are just stunning. So we'll go outside and get the information piece on that one. It does, doesn't it, Michael? It's a fantastic effect. The second piece in this room is actually designed to disintegrate over time. So it's uh, pieces that can be sold or bought, rather. You can buy individual leaves or you can buy the whole, a whole strand. And the money from the proceeds of the sales is all going to a uh, cancer charity. So I think this piece is called Disintegration, but I'll wait until we get outside the room again for the information piece on this one. And we'll get a close-up as well. I'm not sure what it is. It's, it's almost like recycled paper. It's wonderfully esoteric. we go and these are the fallen leaves on the floor this exhibition actually runs right through till April so over time that piece is designed to disintegrate as people buy pieces from it so let's have a look at the uh, information card about those two pieces here we go here's disintegration It 
doesn't actually say what it's made of, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, this work is being donated to Cancer Council New South Wales by the artist. So over the six months of the exhibition, we'll disintegrate piece by piece. I think that's rather lovely. Okay. So over in the background there, we have a stand, um, a permanent feature of the garden, which is the uh, fountain. We'll come back by the fountain so you can get a closer look at it. A little bit more information about the uh, chair. It's called Still. So you can scan that QR code for the talk by the artist if you're interested in more information. It's not a good shot here because of the reflections through the window. All right. So as we um, proceed to the other exhibits, we'll be walking across an elevated platform. This one is designed more for the children. It's called the Night Music Box. And it was the winner of the Accessibility Award on the Kids Art Trail. And what it's designed to look like is, or to represent, is the sound of the, uh, the solar system. So by turning this handle, you can tell I'm no musician. I suspect some of the prongs might be out of place or bent because they're not hitting all the pegs. But you can see what it's meant to do. It's quite interesting. Great for kids. All right, so we'll walk along this uh, elevated platform. It's a gorgeous day. Good morning, those who've joined. So we're up above the gardens at the moment. The gardens are laid out uh, by season and I'm not too familiar yet, but I would intend to become more so with exactly the layout. But this is one of the um, art pieces that we'll come back to. You can see that there's an information card down there. I believe it's called gold. It's rep meant to represent falling leaves. There's some big, beautiful magnolias here and some running water down below us. Those red strings are an actual art installation, so we'll find out about more, more about those when we get down there. And I think the sun might not be in a great position for this one. We've got a palm behind it throwing a little bit of shade. I'm pretty sure this one's part of the permanent exhibition. It's like a trellis. We get glimpses of some of the exhibits as we walk along this platform. And all of these we'll come back to when we get back down to ground level. Over on this side, you can see more of the, the architectural type displays. That one has almost like planter boxes up on top with succulents growing from it. So as I mentioned during the um, preliminary, <laughs> does anyone want to see possum poo? There's a lump of possum poo on the rail right next to me. Okay, so um, we're located approximately 16 kilometres, 10 miles from the city of Sydney, next to Lane Cove National Park. 
and as we pan slowly upwards at this point we can see that fountain I mentioned in the background there. It's an interesting angle being up above the art pieces that we'll get down close in amongst a little later. Just try and get the pathway out of that shot. Okay. So continuing along the elevated pathway. Those gum trees in the background are actually part of the Lane Cove National Park. So uh, it is literally right next to the the National Park. This is the Garden Theatre and events are held here, outdoor musical events. This is one of our native plants, it's called a grevillea and the birds love it, full of honey. You often see rainbow lorikeets and various honey eaters, wattle birds. Down here we have a small, formal, oriental style garden. So we're going to continue along here for a little bit and then over at that tower we'll go downstairs. This is the National Park over here behind that fence. A beautiful area with a river running through it. Great for family picnics. So at the, there are two two sculptural pieces in this tower which we'll see at the bottom of the stairs it's an interesting place to find a trolley through this window here is another view of the national park all right now i need to be a little bit careful going down these stairs my knees don't like stairs very much at this point i don't know if you can see but just beyond the trees, this is uh, the North Ride Industrial Park. It's basically our equivalent of Silicon Valley where all the tech companies are located. <laughs> yes, me too, Elise, it does. So let's have a quick look down before we continue. This is one of the sculptures at the centre of the town the suspended discs looking down onto that arrangement of rocks. This piece is more for the children as well. So basically it's, uh, it's about lichens. And there's just a continually playing um, video on this screen here to accompany it. Aquan Peter. Oh, I remember you telling me who you are. And terrible, I've forgotten. You'll have to remind me. I don't think I can get the discs all in shot or in one frame. So this is the information card for the lichen piece. 
So you can see that this area of the garden is quite wet, damp, and lichens love it here. So it's the perfect situation for this piece here about lichens. The children are prompted to try and identify as many different lichens as they can. Okay, so we're at the bottom of the tower. And just before I turn around and show you the next exhibit, this is a scribbly gum. And the scribbly lines are made by a kind of bug. Actually, Anne, I think they might be cicadas that you're hearing. So I'm not sure I can hear any lorikeets just at the moment. But they certainly are around here. So this is the accompanying exhibit, which is called Scribbly Gum Lace. We'll get up nice and close to it first so you can see the detail before I step back and show you the full piece. So it's made out of plastic, all braided together. And I'm going to have to do a vertical shot so you can really appreciate this. So if you're ready, I'm actually standing on the garden, which I shouldn't be. I'm going to do a quick vertical. One, two, three, and pan upwards. So that's meant to look like two trunks of a tree with this, of a scribbly gum tree. Okay. So if you're ready, I'm going to go back to normal again now. You ready? One, two, three. There we go. So this section of the garden is basically laid out as a, a native Australian wild plant garden. We've got plants like kangaroo paw, you can see why they're called kangaroo paw. The small honey eaters love them. They can stick their beaks right down inside the flower. These are called bird's nest ferns. Here we get to see, oh no, he's run away. I was going to say, we get to see our first dragon. He's over on the log over there. And these are one of our native orchids, not in flower at the moment, obviously, and uh, they're also known as rock lilies. They're really beautiful when they're in flower. Oh, I missed it. Where was the prostate grevillea? Oh, yes, I do. I see it back there. It was with the kangaroo paws. So this, this is our next work of art. And I'll do a vertical from around the other side. It's called Mystic Kitten. Here we go. If we have a look at the top, you'll see the kitten heads. This is not the best light view. I'll go up around the other side to see it. Okay. We don't need that sky in the background. All right, so this is the other side. Mystic kittens.
That one's just called Drop. It's humid, very warm. This one's quite strange. I'm not sure what to make of it. So we have a water pond here, um, which is used for recycling the water in the gardens. And this structure in the middle has been set up to... Oh, how do I describe it? It's been set up to as if it was access point to a um, underground seed conservation uh, storage. It's called Unearth Seed Bank, and it, it asks you to use your imagination and imagine that you could climb down through that um, that entrance there into a tunnel and find yourself in a, a seed bank conserving all the seeds but of course it's it's just an art piece it's not real but you can find out more about it here if you'd like to all right this is one of our beautiful gum trees I love the colour and the texture of the bark. This is one of the permanent pieces of the garden. Here we go, this is our first dragon. He knows I'm here, he's not too bothered. He might not let me get too close. The garden belongs to the nursery, yes. It's a garden centre and uh, the the gardens themselves have been developed over years as uh, displays for inspiration for how you might implement ideas into your own garden. Look at this guy. The gum trees were part of the area. that They've always been here, yes. Although they're quite fast growing. All right, so this piece here is called Fool's Gold, Prospecting in the Garden. And we've got lumps of cubes of gold. Morning, Susanna. Oh, there's a little one. He's a tiny little baby dragon down there. On the ground. Can you see him? Here we go. All right, we're going to cross this bridge which runs over a watercourse. And have it head over and see this guy over here. The cicadas are in full song this morning, competing with the sound of the traffic in the background. So this one's called King Cole. Unfortunately, he's not in a very good position as far as uh, sun and light are concerned. But we'll get quite close to him. And he is actually made out of coal. Coal, resin, fiberglass and steel. Let me see, how close can I can I get his face in shot?
if I step back now, we might get... He looks rather smug, doesn't he? I'm going to do a vertical shot on this so I can get him all in. Are we ready? One, two, three. There he is, smug old King Cole. I'm going back now. You ready? One, two, three. And then over to the information. Pamela, are you referring to the uh, the dragons? Yes, they're all the same species, I believe, the water dragons. I'm not sure what this is, but it's a rather impressive plant. It's got some sort of seed cone coming up through the middle. And these magnificent bird's nest ferns, look at them. They're just thriving here, aren't they? Look at all the spores on the underside of the leaves. All right, so we'll continue this way. How am I going for time? I've got 15 minutes to go. Oh, there's one over this side. Sorry. This is unusual. I don't know what this plant is. No, I don't know, Pamela, and I don't know what this one is either. There's some really unusual plants here. Oh, did you mean the big one with the spores underneath or the one with the seed pod? The big one with the spores underneath the leaves is called the bird's nest fern. The one with the um, seed pod in the centre, I don't know what that is. Yeah, birds in this fern. Now this one here is called reflection. It's got lots of water drops on it at the moment because it rained overnight. So what's it reflecting? And how can I do this so that we get a good angle? There we go. A reflection of the sky through the water drops. I know what this one is. This is papyrus next to the maple there. For all the Canadians. This is a big papyrus, isn't it? Look at it. And the information card for reflection is just here. Okay, so around this side good morning nancy this is called the daffodil garden and it's been oh we've got another dragon here give him give way to him <laughs> okay he's a bit shy this is the daffodil garden it's been set up um, to raise money for cancer for the cancer council And it's the wall that acknowledges donors, um, people who have supported the uh, charity and, um, and people who have passed away as well. But the daffodil is the symbol for the Cancer Council. And if anyone would like more information about the daffodil garden, if I can get it. No daffodils this month, no. Only the, um, only the paper ones. So that's the information there. We've got a little waterfall over here. 
and we often see often see dragons hanging around on the rocks here but there's none at the moment there's a coot is it a coot i think it's a coot Right. Let's go over to the next row where all those artworks were that we were seeing from the um, the top level. This is rather a nice shot though before we get over there. Try and get a spot where the sun isn't in our eyes. I'm guessing that's a lotus. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to backtrack because we need to go this way. Has anyone been to Giovanni? This reminds me of Giovanni, Monet's garden. And every now and again, you get to glimpse out between the arches. Oops, sorry. That was me, my gimbal handling. Hi, Jill. If I just turn it around the other way. Camilla. When we get to the end, I'll look back for a backwards view. I think the view with the uh, palm in the background is the best one. All right, so we've reached my favourite of the uh, the whole exhibit exhibition. This is a Blue Mountains artist that created this piece. And she was inspired to create it. It's all made from felt. After the bushfires two years ago in the Blue Mountains that destroyed a huge, massive part of the, um, the Blue Mountains. So, Dais, I'll get around to the information card in a second. Um, because it's escaped my memory just now. We just have to walk around this way to get to it. So her name is Saskia. Saskia Everingham, I think. Here we go. Refuge is the name of that piece. So she says that she was inspired to create this after many people's homes were lost, but also she would see birds flying above whose homes had been lost as well. And if we come at it from this angle, all up, there's about a dozen of these all different shapes suspended in this small gum tree. Uh, 
one there. Aren't they gorgeous? They're just so unusual, all these different shapes. And they remind me in a lot of ways of, um, of gum nuts. For anyone who's not familiar, the gum tree is the colloquial name of the eucalyptus tree and the gum nuts are the, um, the seed pods that are produced by the tree. Snuggle pot and cuddle pie. And I'm guessing this is an aloe. All right, if I don't get a shake on, we're not going to see very much more. So let's get moving. This is this one called gold leaf that we saw from up above. And to really see this, I am going to have to turn the camera around. So apologies to anyone who doesn't really like that effect. Okay, one, two, three. And there's the gold leaf up there in the middle. Okay, we're ready to go back. One, two, three. There's the gold leaf up there. And the artist is Anne Palmer. And again, you can scan the code if you'd like to listen to and talk about what inspired her to create this piece. So just going back this way for a moment. This is one of the um, permanent pieces of the garden. We sort of walk through all these little rooms at this point. Okay, this one's called My Happy Place. Can anyone relate? Let me take a postcard of the information card first. And then, there we go. Your own little quiet space in the garden with the sound of water in the background. That doesn't go anywhere. We'll go this way. Past more rooms. And as I said, these are really just set up as landscaping ideas for people who like to come here and spend lots of money on their garden. This is the asthma and allergy friendly garden. Here we have a whale tail. Which is part of the permanent display. And then when I turn around, we'll see this piece is called Knots of Eden. says it's porcelain mixed with malt sugar. Okay, moving on. This is another one of my favourites. I really love this one. Hi, Tariq and Ollie. So this one um, is based on Indonesian shadow art. And I believe that when it's windy, 
at least one of these pieces is designed to turn. There's a good spot over here where I can take a lovely shot through the trees. Have a look at what it's made of. Oh, wish my gimbal would stop turning. Hang on a second. Give me a sec. Okay, there we go. Recycled office chairs. How about that? And printed core flute. If we come around here, we'll get a nice shot through the trees. Here we are. lovely isn't it what are the white blossoms um good question does anyone have a plant identification app they're gorgeous aren't they wish i was uh, a more knowledgeable gardener i'm not i know some i don't know very many look at this amazing chair it reminds me of game of thrones Echium. Oh, it is a little bit like Echium, isn't it? Now, if I'm going to see this fountain up there on the next level up, I'm going to have to get a, a move on because we're already out of time. How did I allow that to happen? What did I spend too much time on this time? Has everybody got a few more minutes? Let me just show you this amazing bromeliad. It's against the sky there. Look at this. So, this is massive. This is huge. Look at the flower spike on that. So over here behind me is another piece. Actually, there's two. Do this one first. This one's called the Walk Forward. And to me, it represents family. I mean, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? Okay, just over here. We've got to go down there because we need to get up to that fountain. This piece is called Zenova Flower. Okay. Now, how do I get up to the fountain? Stairs somewhere around here. Eek. Do I have to go up here? Looks like I do. Come on, knees, you can do it. There we are. There's the fountain. Oh, yes, it is, Susanna. We saw it from the, um, the walkway up above. There. It's a little performance space. I love a good shortcut. So did I when I was younger. <laughs> Excuse my huffing and puffing now. So this is the uh, fountain, which is the centerpiece of the gardens. It's obviously a um, botanical theme with um, insects and birds. Yes, they do, and they have um, um, charity events. They have um, 
The owners are very active. The um, Ainsworths, Simon and, oh, I forget his wife's name. I think it might be Anna. So they, they'll hold um, ticketed events to raise money for charity. Um, I'm trying to find the best position to do a vertical shot that's not blinding against the sky. Maybe here, back into this little hedge. It's the Eden Gardens, the Eden Garden Centre. Okay, I'm going vertical. Ready? One, two, three. Yes, they do have a website and also just wondering. Bear with me. I'll just finish doing this. Okay, going back to normal. see if this has the web address on it. Oh, no, it doesn't. Unfortunately, that doesn't have the website address. I've got a pamphlet in my backpack. All right, we're at 50 minutes. If anyone wants to indulge me for a few moments more. Thanks, Tammy. So this section is just your kind of annuals that you'll see everywhere. The stuff that everyone's familiar with. We've got lavenders and gladioli. There's some um, Australian natives in pots over there. All the kangaroo paws, all the different coloured kangaroo paws. This one, this one is. Um, in our front garden where I live in my apartment. I, I love it. It's called Woolly Bush. It's so soft. It just feels like a pom-pom. There's a grevillea next to it. This is showing you how you might um, pot up plants. Then we've got a whole bunch of proteas. Various grevilleas. Over there we've got bottle brushes. Christmas bush. More woolly bush. See, I know some plants. I just don't know. Just don't know them all. Swan River pea. This one's called. And I love this one with the pink flower. There we go. Banksias. Oh, Pamela. <laughs> yeah, we've almost adopted proteas as our own. We tend to do that in Australia. You know, we... Uh, we like something and we, okay, it's an Australian now. All right. Now, one last thing I'd love to show you before we finish up is the um, uh, carnivorous plants. Here's some more grevilleas before we go over there. Various succulents and cacti. This is the one that's growing on top of that um, arc, that sort of, um, what do you call it? That arch, that brick arch that was over there. I love these. Keep pesky dogs and other intruders out of your front garden. All right, over here, where are they? Where are they hiding them today? Have they moved them? Oh, here they are. Looks like they've got some new ones too. 
Sorry, sorry for the pavement shot. Here we go. Pitcher plants. Pitcher plants. And look at these amazing Venus fly traps. My daughter has one. Aren't they incredible? Just see if I can get a better angle for you. Aren't they gorgeous? And they're in tiny. Like, I'm not allowed to touch them because... But that is... That's how big they are. All right. That went way over time. Aren't I naughty? Back to the ginger. <sighs> so before I finish up, do you get many flies where you live, Lynn? Too many. Too many flies. We get those little, um, uh, what do you call them, the, the tiny little like fruit flies too. Okay, I'm turning around. You can get a sweaty look of me. There. I'm glowing now after that humid walk in the garden. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it. I've got people behind me. I'll try and move away from them. Hope, hope you enjoyed the walk through the gardens today. Um, I'll run it a few more times because the exhibition runs until um, April, I believe. So I, I intend to run it a few more times and try and get to the pieces that we might have missed today as well. So enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to spend the rest of my day looking for other places that we can go visit together. Botanical gardens, I am definitely going to go to the botanical gardens. It's amazing. Um, I could probably run three tours there and they'd all be different. So thank you once again and um, I'll say bye.